What's up, YouTube? So I want to talk about the power dynamics involved in predator protection and victim blaming. All right. And this situation came about, you know, I kind of thought of this topic because of the whole R. Kelly situation. Right. And as well, um, a YouTube user did a live stream and kind of talked about how seemingly, seemingly and honestly, probably um, really, um, you know, the young black women involved seem to be victims of victim blaming, right? People seem to be blaming them more so than R. Kelly, right? So it kind of got me to thinking, okay, why is that happening? Why is that happening? Because this isn't really an isolated incident, of course. This tends to happen in certain situations where they will, well, people will put the blame on the victim versus the perpetrator, you know, or the victimizer, right? Again, I kind of just want to go through this and sort of just explore and explain the power dynamics involved in victim blaming and predator protection, all right? Okay, first, in order for victims to be blamed, they must lack power and authority, right? They must be in a position where they are in, they don't have as much power and authority or no power and authority compared to the person who has victimized them, right? The perpetrator, right? You know, in this case, you know, the females don't have as much power as say R. Kelly, right? Because he's like famous and he has money and you know industry connections you know this that and the third right so for victim blaming to take place there must be sort of a difference in power and authority between the uh, two people or two groups of people all right all right next in order for predators to be protected, they must have power and authority. They must have some type of power and authority, right? Because oftentimes people protect predators because they're afraid that they may lose something if they don't protect them, right? Like people may feel like they can lose, you know, career opportunities, um, you know, money, um, even perhaps safety. You know, sometimes when you go against some groups of people or some people or some groups of people, your safety becomes or turn it it's in jeopardy once you do that. So for people to protect predators, seemingly they have to have some sort of a fear of their power and authority, or even just of them in some cases, right? You know. And again, this situation with R. Kelly is not at all exclusive. You know, there's predator protection and victim blaming in a whole lot of situations. This is just one of many. Okay, I'm just sort of using this situation as a point of departure because one, it deals with black people, and two, it's um, a current situation as well. Um, um, but next, let me uh, move on. Next, sometimes some, I'm going to bring it to the black community now. All right. So sometimes some black men like to push the idea that, hmm, well, maybe I shouldn't get to that point yet. All right. But, you know, before I go there, I want to speak a little bit about this whole R. Kelly situation, though. Right. And sort of set the tone. For the rest of this video all right so you notice again that the women are the women who perhaps were girls at the time there there tends to be some people putting the blame on them as if it was their fault and that as if r kelly doesn't have any agency in the situation as if he's completely innocent as if someone's trying to frame him or set him up right and as well, you do see um, 
black men and black women, you know, uh, I did a whole video about the type of black men and the type of black women that we have to be weary of and we have to watch out for, right? Who are the threat among us, right? The black men who don't want to take no damn accountability or responsibility for anything and then the black women who want to give those men or those type of men cover, right? Just as we're seeing in this R. Kelly situation. We're seeing that play out too. Um, but I'm also seeing um, black men using examples in mainstream media, aka white people, um, as like, oh, well, how come they can do it and get away with it, but R. Kelly can't? Basically, that seems to be the argument. They may not put, put it point blank like that, but that seems to be the argument. And I'm like, well, this is black folks talking amongst black folks. I, I would understand that coming up is if like white people were to jump in and be like, oh, you know, this, you know, these hypersexual black men, you know, molesting people, you know, coming with that sort of a rhetoric, right? And I understand you using those white media, uh, mainstream media examples as sort of a counter to that, right? Like, oh, what about Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein right? Or, um, you know, and the countless other examples too, right? But this is about black people. This is a conversation amongst black people. And even amongst black people, they seem to be bringing up these mainstream white media examples for some reason. And it's like, well, do you want to be able to get away with what they get away with? With your own people? <laughs> that seems to be the argument, right? And it's like, why is that an argument, first of all? Like, we got we got other things to talk about. Now, I personally think at this point in time, those mainstream media examples are irrelevant to our situation. As a community, it's irrelevant, right? I think this is a good time to sort of, you know, set the trend as far as like, okay, what's gonna happen if you do this to young black girls? Or just people, black people in general, right? I really, there tends to be sort of, um, a lack of people wanting to hold, I'm going to just say hold black men accountable for when they do fucked up shit, you know, because I guess people are afraid to go against that, to go against the uh, status quo, I guess. I'm not sure, but I will say that I think this situation really demonstrates who has power and who does not have power within the black community. because. Oftentimes, sometimes, some black men like to push the narrative and to push the idea that black women have more power and authority than black men, right? And I think, low-key, this is partially to sort of alleviate themselves of responsibility and accountability, you know? And also just to blame black women for all the fuck-ups in the community. <laughs> Shit. Right? Um... <clears throat> And as well, you know, just, you know, just being able to sidestep their responsibilities as men and supposedly patriarchs in the black community, right? And again, I just want to say that the R. Kelly situation shows who really has the, has the power and authority between black men and black women. Right. Because if black women had the power and authority, you would see this play out a lot differently. Right. Like, OK, for example, let's say if R. Kelly victims were all Caucasian females. You would see this play out a lot differently than if his um, than how it's playing out now, because now his victims are like black females mostly um as far as skin tone is concerned i think there was like a mixture of skin tones i don't know um <clears throat> i did see some light skin chicks up in there um also um i did see someone that looked like they could be maybe like white or white passing you know but nevertheless this shows like 
okay, this, let's imagine this playing out with white women as the victims and R. Kelly being the victimizer, right? How do you think this would play out in the media, given all the historical examples of this playing out, right? Between, you know, um, you know, white women and black men and uh, sexual crime. How do you think this would play out? Probably a lot differently, right? Then the victims would not, most likely would not be blamed, right? Because, well, one, white men would be at the helm of this, right? They would be at the forefront of this and they would be using their power and privilege to make sure that their women get justice, right? Um, uh, because they're not going to allow, say, R. Kelly or, like, you know, some black person or even just non-black person of color to perpetrate a, a type of crime like that um, against their women. However, if this was a situation between, between white men and white women, then honestly, I think it would play out sort of like the R. Kelly situation is playing out in the black community. Right, Harvey Weinstein, for instance, right? Look how long he was able to go, right? Even now, he's just now getting like convicted or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but even now, though, right? So, again, I don't think this is exclusive to black people because it's not. I really don't think this is exclusive. But again, it just, it ultimately just goes to show how power dynamics play a part in people getting justice, right? Look how it's playing out with Harvey Weinstein, right? Look how it's playing out with R. Kelly, right? And if Harvey Weinstein's victims were all black women, hmm, yeah. yeah. It'd probably be a less chance of them really, a really less, less chance of them getting justice. But, you know, to be fair, um, there was that situation with that Eurasian police officer, Daniel Holtzclaw, where he was specifically targeting black women to rape and sexually assault, right? And he did get sentenced to, I believe, perhaps like 20 years to life or something like that for that. And somewhere within him testifying, I think, he says something to the effect of like, oh, you know, I think the, re like the reason he targeted them was because, you know, there were black women and no one would care about them. So that goes to show that other groups of men do know and sort of keep an eye on how black men treat black women, you know, and also are very weary of the situ, sort of like the situation that black women are in, right? Sort of like where their positionality within the hierarchy of white supremacy, right? But again, it just pretty much just goes to show that when it comes to justice and even just receiving empathy and sympathy for what you've gone through, oftentimes there are factors that play a part in it, like your social standing, your gender, your race, perhaps sexual orientation, um, Um, religious affiliation. Like, there's so many different factors. And it's like, why should those things be factors in you receiving empathy and sympathy and justice for what you've gone through, you know? Um, and as well, I think if, the, if this was like, as far as like the black community is concerned, right? If this was, if R. Kelly was white and the victims were still black girls and women, right? 
I think we as a community would be more like inclined to seek justice, right? We, you know, yeah, we have to get justice for these girls, but since the victim, the victims are black women, and the victimizer allegedly is a black man, it's like, hmm, you know, it's, right? You know, like, hmm, you know. Then we have to take all these things into account, right? Oh, the system of white supremacy. Oh, they trying to, um, you know, bring a brother down, right? These black women ain't loyal, right? No. Then there's even a, an attempt to humanize the predator, right? Like, oh, you know, R. Kelly was sexually abused as a child, right? Heck, they even tried to do that with that whole um, Dylan Roof dude, right? That that uh, white young white supremacist who shot up that uh, black church and killed like nine black people, right? Doing all these damn human interest stories about his ass, right? Um, you know, by the way, <laughs> like some black guy like whooped his ass in prison too. Um, I did a video about that. <laughs> But, um, again, it's just, you know, see how this sort of plays out, though. They're humanizing the victimizer or the predator while dehumanizing the victim, like the real victims of it, right? Are we doing human interest stories going into, you know, perhaps the things that they've gone through in their family history, you know? Some people are saying, oh, their parents were pimping them out. Okay, well, if your parents are pushing you in a direction and you're a child, do you really have much control over, you know, what your parents do as far as, like, raising you and pushing you to do things, right? That's something to think about. But, again, it just goes to show the people who have power and the people who don't. And how we tend to gravitate towards, you know, us as just human beings tend to unfortunately gravitate towards the people who have power. Not all, but a lot, right? Thus, sort of just maintaining, you know, this fucked up status quo, you know. Um, in regards to the black females involved, you know, the black female victims, right? I think that they'll most likely see justice only if white people get involved and push and push the case forward. I think if it's being left up to black people, I really don't think they're going to get much justice. Um, sad to say, um, and you know, at this point, it's like people are like. Some people are like caping for R. Kelly because they feel like he may be a proxy for like to represent like black men just in general. And like I get that in theory, but at this point, I'm like, well, he still needs to be taken down though. At this point, I think R. Kelly has had a long enough time to get his act together. He done got away with this way too many times. You know, really, once was more than enough. You know, at this point, like, are we just supposed to just let this continue? You know? Is R. Kelly going to be like, what, 55, 65, still doing the same thing? And we just turn our, turn our heads, turn the blind eye. <laughs> Pretend like nothing's wrong. All right, sweeping it under the rug. And then when we have all these issues in the community, then we want to, you know, spin it around and, you know, blame it all on black women. <laughs> right. You know, in situations like R. Kelly, this is when, you know, the true men and patriarchs of the community kind of really need to step up. Right. Even like in the individual situation, oftentimes, like uh, some women were coming through. It's like, oh, no, my dad wasn't playing that. <laughs> right? Like they mom too, but like definitely they dad. No, they dad wasn't playing that. <laughs> you know, and that's good. You know, that's good that they had that, um, you know, protective um, patriarchal figure in their life to make sure that they didn't end up like the women 
um, like R. Kelly's victims, right? And perhaps even didn't even end up like, you know, baby mamas even, you know? <laughs> but we kind of need that on like a communal level, you know, and I don't know how that's going to come about, but it just kind of somehow some way needs to happen, you know, but I don't see that happening, happening, unfortunately. You know? I just see business as usual once this blows over, status quo, you know, maintaining the status quo. Hmm. You know, and then some people wanted to come through and talk about R. Kelly's musical legacy and, you know, all that type of stuff. And I'm like, you know, how this one, you know, take away from it and tarnish it and whatnot. And I'm like, well, R. Kelly should have thought about that. He's the one with the musical legacy. That should have been, you know, on his mind when he was you know, allegedly doing all this stuff. You know, so why should anybody else be worried about his musical legacy? You know, like, especially if you ain't even getting paid from it, any type of money from it. Especially if you ain't on R. Kelly's payroll, you know. Because that's the thing. Some people going hard in the paint trying to defend R. Kelly. And I'm like, you're not even on his payroll. <laughs> like, what you getting out of this? You know? But I don't know. Um, again, it kind of does bring to light kind of like the dysfunction that exists in the black community. You know, some of this dysfunction is sort of like, you know, some of this like, oh... And then someone's like, well, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know about that. And then it's like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. But all in all, and this situation is just, is very, very, very disturbing. But I'm going to bring this video to a close. Uh, thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.